What's going on guys? We're gonna go for a ride in the Bel Air. Uh, it's a special thing to drive, and while it won't feel as special through a video, I still want you guys to experience it, so we're gonna go for a drive. So I think I got you guys in a decent, decent enough spot to where you can see kind of what's going on, but you can also see me. Hopefully it's good. Uh, let's fire this bad boy up. You might notice I'm in the same exact spot as the last video. This is literally 10 minutes after I filmed the uh, debut video for this car. So got a fresh change of clothes, shout out to Field Trip, Alexa, you know, um, always come and correct with the clothing. But uh, yeah, let's do this thing for a spin. Flip on the air and we gotta wait for it to air up. So I'm gonna cut the camera while it airs up. That's gonna take a while. Immediately I'm driving into the sun, but uh, we're off. Uh, Driving a Bel Air from 1962 is about as freaking cool as it can get. Like, no seat belt, bench seat, so you know, we, we were moving around. Um, it's just baller. This thing rides like an absolute boat on this suspension. Like, it is such a smooth ride. Like, the E30 is on air, but it's really stiff and like, not the most comfortable. This thing on the other hand is so smooth and soft on the air suspension, it feels amazing. Um, let's get some exhaust, maybe you can hear. Some nice acceleration, maybe you can't. Uh, it's not a fast car, it's a 283 small block. Um, if you don't know, Cubic is like, or uh, not Cubic, but 283 is basically like the Cubic uh, Displacement of the motor, I think, is how it goes. I honestly am not even 100 sure on that. I'm not like a, a Chevy old car guy. Like I know, like a 3.5 M30. I don't know cubic liters of a, what or whatever cubic whatever. But so these cars actually retailed for I believe 2,800 bucks in 1962. Can you imagine paying 2,800 dollars for a brand new car? Obviously, with inflation, 2800 bucks back then is a lot more than 2800 bucks is now. But that's just so crazy to me that you could go somewhere and buy a car for 2800 bucks and you get this absolute massive boat of a car. A lot of people ask, yes, the air suspension works while I'm driving. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now. There's nothing you won't really be able to tell from the camera. But I can go up and down side to side with the uh, car running and it is fun to go side to side. But in terms of cars that bring attention, as you can maybe see that guy that was just staring at this thing, this car brings more attention than any car I have ever owned or driven in my entire life. Like this car breaks everyone's necks, young people, old people, doesn't matter. Like, these are just things that you do not see on the road. Um, I'm used to being in cars that you don't see on the road. I, I drive old, old BMWs, but this thing, I have never gotten more looks in a car than any BMW I own, even the yellow E36, and that thing brings a lot of looks. But this thing, you cannot drive it without getting a compliment, getting a thumbs up, having someone look. It is a crazy, like, it's a, it's a really crazy feeling. The speedometer is a little bit off. It reads about 15 low, I kind of found out. So, it's not a fast car, you know, these are cruisers, man. I don't know what the top speed on this thing is, but I'd imagine it's not much more over like 70 miles an hour. So, it's really obnoxious when people ride your ass in this. Um, people aren't so bad with this thing. Um, I think this car is kind of intimidating in a lot of cases. I hope that sun doesn't mess up the shot, but I, a lot of my cars, especially like the really low ones, I kind of drive carefully. And a lot of people tend to drive kind of like jerk offs when you're driving like that. But um, in this thing, people people keep their distance. A lot of people ask, like in my TikTok video, is it legal to drive with no seatbelts? Like, is this car basically road legal? Yes, these things are 100% road legal. They um, they came from a time where you didn't have to have seatbelts and. Even though it is a law now to wear a seatbelt, if you have a car that wasn't designed with seatbelts, you're not expected to retrofit seatbelts. That's that's ridiculous. Like that's not a thing. It'd be really hard to like safely retrofit safety equipment in this car. Same as old BMWs with uh, no airbags. 
you uh, you do not you don't need a you don't need them. If the car didn't come with them, you don't need them. So a lot of people ask that. You may ask, what's it like driving a car that is so unsafe? Um, I try not to think about it. Um, it it's this is a death trap. Like, if you guys are interested, look up 1959 Bel Air versus I think like a 2011 Cruze. I think it is. Um, or 2009 or 2011 Cruise or some sort of Chevy. Watch that video, and it'll see, you'll see what happens when this thing hits a modern car. A lot of people think that because this is full metal, big steel, huge car, that it's a tank. And they're not wrong. It is a tank. I mean, if you hit like minor stuff, getting a minor fender bender, this thing will likely inflict more damage on a modern car or anything else. If you actually watch this thing head-on collision with a modern car it is catastrophic these things what these things don't have is what modern cars are all designed to have which is called crumple zones and basically what that is is the car is designed to crumple up in the front end or the back end when you get in a collision so basically what that means is it will crush and absorb all the impact so then you're safe. What this car doesn't do is have a crumple zone. The entire car is a crumple zone, including the cabin. So you get a main accident or a major accident, the entire hood is gonna fold like a can right into the freaking um, cockpit of the car. And what happens a lot when that happens is the motor will get pushed right into the, the driver. Literally heard of first-hand accounts of people who know someone whose engine got literally shoved into the cockpit and actually burned them, uh, which I can't imagine would be a very enjoyable or pleasant experience. Um, so it's actually pretty scary to think about like what could happen. Uh, you know, I, I got hit in my E34 before. That car, no airbags. Uh, I have to say, it might sound dumb, I'm glad that car didn't have airbags in it because airbags, obviously they're safe, they're a safety feature, but those things hurt you a lot. You know, like in the case of the E34, I was at a dead stop, she came in and hit my front end. Probably would have set off the airbag and that airbag probably would have hurt me more than I actually got hurt in the incident. and. I didn't get hurt at all. Uh, I got pushed back a, a decent amount, but that airbag blowing off my face would not have felt good. And the thing is, prior to like 96, or even might even be like 99 or 2000, those old BMW airbags are not in any, ma any means good. They are trash. They literally do more damage than good. Um, a lot of them have shrapnel in them and stuff. I know there's the whole Takata BMW airbag recall. Uh, I don't think those are necessarily the Takata recalled ones, but just in general, the old the old style airbags are super unsafe. Uh, so I'm happy to not have them. I don't I don't mind not having them in a car. Uh, no seatbelts on the other hand, that's a little wild. Uh, I, it would it would hurt a lot getting hit in this car. I gotta say. Uh, but you know you can't you can't think about your daily life in terms of like hoping not to get into an accident. You can't live your life that way. So uh, I don't drive it fast. It's not a highway car. So I mean I'm seeing max like 50 miles an hour. So yeah, you can still get hurt at 50, and you can still get hit at 50, and it would you know you could die. But regardless, I'm not I'm not on the highway going 130, right? It's not it's not an E34 with a turbo. So kind of just got to think beyond all that it's also pretty hard to get used to the uh, drum brakes and the uh, no power steering while you're moving the steering is easy it's fine it's as you'd expect but when I'm trying to park this thing or move it around the driveway you have to absolutely crank this freaking wheel and it's not easy by any means that's why it's so big but uh, I've had cars with no power steering so that's not the craziest thing but the brakes for sure because you go to apply them, you get nothing until you're actually like really pushing down on them and then you're getting jolted forward. So that's for sure kind of a hard thing to get used to with this car. And then also the fact that there's no passenger mirror and the actual driver's side mirror is about like this big. You guys saw in my other video, it's freaking tiny. It does actual, absolutely no good. 
So when I'm cruising this thing, I'm actually, you know, fully turning my head. And it's obviously nice in an old car like this because you have a ton of visibility. Uh, it's a it's a freaking fishbowl. So it's not an issue to just turn around and look behind you, which is what you absolutely need to do because that mirror will not do a, a damn thing for you. So yeah, I just want to take you guys for a spin, you know, show you what it's like to drive one of these things. Uh, I'm sitting forward because I'm not sure if I'll, I'll be in the frame if I'm leaning back like this. So that's probably why I look uncomfortable, but otherwise, this car is one of the most comfortable cars to freaking drive. Um, man, I don't know what that was, but that was sweet. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you sit back, you know, put your arm back. It, it's such a cruiser, and I love everything about it. I, I love my cruising cars. I don't know if I talk about much, but you know, obviously I have my fast cars, I have my sports cars, but when it comes down to it, I'm a huge fan of just driving a big body car, lower the ground and slow. That's just, to me, I get the most enjoyment out of that. You know, I get just as much enjoyment out of that as I do, you know, driving a 450 horsepower freaking monster of an E34, you know? So, this car is just right in my alley in terms of driving and everything. I, uh, I love everything about this car. Owning this car has been such a pleasure and such a special experience. I have to say, you know, you guys, my followers who are watching this video, you should go out and buy one of these, go out and try to drive one of these, get a ride in one of these. If you're local to me, hit me up. It is a very special experience. It is the most special experience of any car I've ever driven. Even driving around in it, not being, not driving, it's still special. Uh, these cars, you know, it, it, this is this is this is cars 60 years ago. This is what they were. Um, we'll never see that again in the days of plastic and safety features. You'll never see something like this again. You'll rarely even see these on the road. So I enjoy every minute of it. Uh, I think you guys should try to too. No matter you know, no matter what that means, how you gotta do it. But just go out and enjoy them. Enjoy your cars. I put more miles on this thing in the month I've owned it than I put on the E12 in the entire life. I just got a thumbs up. But uh, yeah, I owned the E12 for about seven to eight months and I put probably like 50 miles on it. I've already probably put a good like 200 on this thing. I drive this thing all the time. I drive it to class, to the store, to eat, no matter what. And right now I'm trying to put as many miles on it as I can because it's almost mid-October and this thing doesn't have heat so you, you I gotta enjoy it now while I can because when it gets cold it's gonna be freaking cold in this thing let me tell you uh, I asked the previous owner he said Halloween is about the last couple weeks he gets out of driving it so it's coming up three weeks or so it'll be ready to go away uh, I just gotta find somewhere to store this bad boy because this thing like I said long as hell doesn't even fit in the garage so i'm gonna have to plan that out figure out what i'm gonna do there but yeah i'm gonna drive it as much as i can while i still can i gotta i gotta store a lot of the cars it's getting to be that time of the year so yeah oh and here's the horn for you guys got that classic old horn sound so yeah thank you guys for coming along hope you enjoyed cruising around the low rider talking about it um stay tuned don't know what's next but if you want more videos on this thing, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.